Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to be doing a guide on the repo missions which are currently triple money in RP and GTA Online. I'll break down every mission individually and give in-depth tips on how to complete every mission. So I apologise if the video is long in length. These missions are really fun in my opinion and they are a good way of mixing up the money grind. Yes, there are better ways of making money in this game but these missions are still not a bad way to make money when on triple money. If you're watching this video and the repo missions are not triple money in RP, then this video is still useful to watch, but just bear in mind the missions won't pay out as good. Without wasting any more time, let's get straight into the video. The first repo mission I'm going to talk about in this video is Blow Up 4, which is a fairly easy mission on the whole. The only tricky part of this mission is when you exit the warehouse. There's quite a lot of enemies and I find lower level players tend to die at this part often. The best tip I can give you for this mission, and most missions in general, is to use the Armoured Karuma, as you are for the most part safe from any gunshots from the enemies and makes this mission so much more easier to complete. You can also get other players in the job to get in your vehicle as well and it will also prevent them from dying. When you arrive you want to park your vehicle away from the entrance of the building as if you park too close to it, it may despawn your car. So I suggest parking your car where I parked my car just here and at this location it's guaranteed not to despawn. When you go into the warehouse you just need to blow up all of the cars. The most efficient weapon to use would probably be the grenade launcher but the ammo for that is quite expensive. If you want to save your ammo it may sound bad but I suggest just sitting back and letting all the other people do the work. Or you could use a jerry can which can be picked up off the floor so it is basically free. All you need to do is pour it on the floor around the vehicle and shoot it to light it up. Just be aware this may take significantly longer so it may not be worth doing. Also remember you have to go downstairs and blow up the vehicles there as well. Now the tricky part of the mission is when you exit the warehouse. You will be given a little amount of time before the enemies arrive so what you want to do is quickly run and get in your Karuma and then just start shooting the enemy players with the AP pistol until the game tells you to leave the area. When all the enemies have been taken out, all you need to do is drive away and the mission is easy as that. The next mission I'm going to cover is Burn Rate, which may seem quite complicated at first, especially if it's your first time doing the mission, but once you get the hang of it, it's a pretty easy mission to be honest. It doesn't matter what vehicle you use for this mission, as you'll be using a fire truck anyway. The first thing Simeon will tell you is to find a fire truck and at first he doesn't give you a location. If you know where they spawn off by heart then that's great but if you don't just wait like a minute and he will locate two different locations on the map where they can spawn. When you are in a fire truck you need to drive down to the docks and the aim of the mission is to extinguish all of the cars that are on fire. Just to be aware there are a shit ton of enemies that spawn in so this is where it is important to have the snack menu up the whole time so whenever you take damage you can just regenerate with the snacks. This is because in this vehicle you can't shoot back as you only have a water gun. Like what the fuck are you going to do with that? To extinguish the cars all you need to do is fire the water gun by pressing LB on Xbox. I don't know what it would be on other consoles. And you need to hold it over the vehicle for a good couple seconds until you see the circle on the minimap disappear. Once all the cars are extinguished, you need to then take out all the enemies which isn't too difficult. In this mission you have ally NPCs to help you, but to be honest they are fucking useless. Once you have taken out all of the enemies you will automatically complete the mission and it's as easy as that. The next mission is Do You Even Lift, which I consider the technically hardest mission on this list as many people struggle picking up the cars with the cargo bob. The first thing Simeon will do in this mission is make you find a cargo bob. If you have your own cargo bob you can spawn it in, which would be best as you would avoid the gunfire of the security guards. But if you don't own a cargo bob then they spawn in at the movie studio which is in the top left of Los Santos. If you don't know where it is, Simeon will send you a message after a short amount of time and tell you where it is. When you arrive there will be loads of security guards. You just need to make your way through them and get to the cargo bobs. When starting this mission it is best to do it with 4 people, as no matter how many people are in the mission, 
there will always be four cars that need to be delivered. So if you're doing this mission solo or with four friends, you'll still have four vehicles to pick up. This doesn't make it very solo friendly. If you're doing this mission with other people, then you want to make sure you don't go to pick up the same vehicle and you all spread out and go to different locations. Now moving on to what most people struggle with, which is picking up the vehicles with the cargo bob. The number one piece of advice I have when using the cargo bob is to just relax and keep the vehicle as still as possible. It is tempting to rock side to side with sudden movements if the hook isn't in the right spot, but this makes it 10 times harder and more likely to crash. Just keep as still as possible and aim to pick up the car from the tallest part. In some cars it is the spoiler which you need to aim for. After you pick it up, the hard part is now out of the way. All you need to do now is fly it carefully to the drop zone in the car park. To fully deliver the vehicle, you'll need to drop it from the cargo bob, then get out of the cargo bob itself and drive the car manually into the checkpoint. This is because it's hard to drop the um, car right on the checkpoint, so it's just easier to drive it in. Pretty simple. You may have to go and pick up another car if you don't have four players with you, or if one of your teammates is struggling to pick up a vehicle, you might as well go and help him. I've done this mission quite a lot of times, and sometimes I watch people try and pick up a car for like 10 minutes straight, so you might need to go and help them out. One thing I forgot to mention is that the vehicle may need to be moved a little bit before it's picked up. In this instance, it was under a garage, so I needed to move it to a suitable location before I was able to pick it up from the cargo bob. As I said earlier, this is probably the hardest repo mission for a lot of players. But as soon as you master picking up the vehicles with the cargo bob, then this mission is relatively simple and easy to complete. Boom. The next mission I'm going to talk about is GTA Today 2. And in this mission, you'll have to steal cars marked on the map. If your team has four players, then there'll be four cars to steal. But if your team has two players, then there'll be two cars to steal, etc. The most important thing in this mission, especially when playing with randoms, is making sure you all don't go to the same location. To prevent this, I suggest hanging back until you get a general idea of where your teammates are going, and then go to the location they're not going to. In most missions, it's useful to get into the same vehicle as your teammates, as you usually go to the same location. But in this mission, you all split up and go to different locations. So it's better if you use different vehicles. In this clip, you can see I have someone else in my vehicle, mainly because he got in my car and there's nothing I can do to get him out. In this instance, I dropped him off at a point, waited for him to get out of the car, then went to go and steal a different car. There is no point in going to the same locations as your teammates, as the gunfights are not really that hard. Just like the other missions, I recommend using the armoured Karuma, as you can just easily take out all the enemies, no problem, then go and steal the car. But to be honest, the enemies in this mission are not that strong and pretty easy to take out. Once you have the car, you need to deliver it to the docks and you have to wait for your teammates to finish. After that, Simeon will then send you out to go and collect another round of vehicles. Same concept as before, make sure you don't go to the same location of your teammates and spread out and go to separate locations. Unlike last time, you may receive a wanted level, depending on which location you went to. But in this mission, you can call Lester, so make sure you do. You can't call him in every mission, but you can in this one. It's only $600, so no player, no matter how much money you have in the game, should be stressing out over that amount of money. Once all the cars have been delivered, then that's the mission. It's pretty time consuming compared to the other missions in this video, but it isn't that difficult to complete, even for inexperienced players. But just remember, the longer you are in a mission, the more you get paid. So if you're in a mission and it's taken a long time to complete, don't stress out because you're just going to get paid more anyway. I remember when I was in a mission and it took ages to complete and the payout was like 90k and normally you get paid around 50k per repo mission. Now moving on to the next mission, which is are we nearly there yet? Very funny. This mission is fairly straightforward. All you need to do is drive to Sandy Shores, shoot a couple enemies and then steal a truck. Again with this mission, I recommend that you use the Armoured Karuma as it is the easiest way to take out enemies without taking damage yourself. 
Once all the enemies have been killed, you can't just get in the truck and drive off, as there's all these vehicles in the way. To be able to get out, you need to move three trucks, which are the ones seen in the footage. Once you remove these three trucks, you can get out without a problem. What I see a lot of players do is that they blow up all of the vans to try and get them out of the way. First of all, you're risking blowing up the brickade. And second, it doesn't even move them out the way. They're still there, just blown up. So don't blow up the vehicles. One thing to be aware of is when you are moving the vehicles out the way, there will be another wave of enemies that spawn in. So you'll need to deal with them first. Once you have successfully made your way out of the dealership, you'll need to make your way back to Simeon's place. And bear in mind, the enemies that come after you are pretty powerful. If you are the one driving the truck, then I suggest having your snacks menu up for the whole journey back, so you don't die when getting shot by the enemies. What I see a lot of people do when driving, is that they are too concerned about shooting the enemies back, but when you're doing that you're more likely to crush, and run out of health. So I suggest if you're the one driving the brickade, just focus on driving and keeping yourself alive. You may take a fair bit of damage to the vehicle, but from my experience you don't have to worry much about the vehicle health, as if you get back quick enough, you'll be fine. If you're not the one driving back, then you should be protecting the brickade as much as possible by acting as a shield and taking the bullets, and also taking out the enemies. This mission can be completed solo, like I did, but it's useful to have players protecting you on your way back. On the whole though, this mission is relatively simple, but the place you're most likely to fail is on the way back when the enemies are chasing you. You just need to focus on driving as quick as possible back without crashing, and you should be fine. The next mission I'm going to cover is Sasquashed. I think that's how you say it, I'm not 100% sure. But this mission I would say is up there for one of the most fun missions. You need to first drive to Maze Bank Arena. It doesn't matter what vehicle you use to get there. When you get there, you need to take out the security guards who are guarding the vehicles. Once that's done, the number one mistake I see players make on this mission is that they all go to the same location and destroy the same vehicles as their teammates. What you need to do is be the bigger person and wait a minute or two and see where your teammates are going on the mini-map and then from that spread out and go to the opposite location to where they are going so the mission is completed quicker. If you're wondering how to destroy the vehicles, I was actually quite confused at first. All you need to do is drive on top of the vehicle, stay there for a second or two, then it will explode. It is quite satisfying to be fair. Once the first round of vehicles are destroyed, there will be another bunch of vehicles you will be sent to destroy again. One thing I have to say is to be careful not to spook the drivers, as once they get alerted, their cars are actually a lot faster than these monster trucks so it'll take a long time to chase them down. Once you complete the second round of vehicles, you will need to then lose the cops and deliver the vehicles to the port. What a lot of people do is focus on losing the cops first, then drive to the port, which isn't a bad idea, but as it is only a two-star wanted level, you could probably get away with just driving to the port and you'll most likely lose the cops on the way, but if not, you can always lose them at the port as well. As you can see in the background footage, I was at the port and still had a wanted level, but it is easy to lose the cops at the port. Once all your teammates have delivered their vehicle, the, the mission is complete. Simple. Now moving on to the mission, Simeon Onyx. I think that's how you say it. And basically all you need to do in this mission is travel to LSIA and steal the cars from the aeroplane. It doesn't matter what car you use to drive to the airport, but I'd recommend using the armoured Karuma as when you arrive you are under heavy fire from the police and the crewman will protect you until you get inside of the aircraft. Just be careful you don't leave your vehicle in the way so it blocks the cars from getting out of the plane. Once you are in the cars, it is best to get out of the airport from the gates seen in the footage. To lose the cops, what literally nobody does in this mission is call Lester. As in most contact missions it won't let you, but for some reason the game lets you call Lester in this one. You should call Lester once you are outside the airport gates, otherwise you will regain your wanted level after calling him. After that, just drive the car safely back to Simeon's dealership, and boom. One thing you need to bear in mind in this mission is that if any of your teammates are AFK, or die during the mission, then you'll need to go all the way back again 
and basically do the mission twice as you'll need to enter a vehicle again and lose the cops again. But it's not the end of the world as the longer you spend in a mission, the more you get paid. So it's not the worst thing. The next mission is Under the Hammer, which in my opinion is an extremely easy mission. The only difficult bit is when you arrive at a police station, you are under a lot of fire and it's pretty easy to die. Just like most missions in this video, the Armoured Karuma is a must. Oh. Sorry. The first part of this mission is driving to the police station. Once you are there, you want to stay in your Karuma and shoot the cops until most of them are taken out. In this clip, you can see I had a teammate in my Karuma with me and I dropped him off at his vehicle and then went to go and pick mine up. Without the Karuma, I can see this part of the mission being extremely tricky. And when I'm playing with randoms, they always seem to die at this part in the mission. But once you have stolen your vehicle and are successfully out of the police station, all you need to do is lose the cops and deliver the cars to the docks. Unfortunately in this mission, you have a three-star wanted level and can't call Lester. What I suggest doing is driving straight to the docks. Most players will try and lose the cops before they get to the docks, but I think this takes longer. As I find losing the cops at the port really easy, as there's lots of open space and it is pretty easy to stay out of their line of sight, as you can see in the footage. When you lose the cops, you're already at the port, so all you need to do is drive it into the checkpoint and boom, it's that simple. So that's the end of all the missions covered and I just want to give some overall tips and advice. The most useful mission to use in these missions, I'm probably repeating myself at this point, but it is the Armoured Karuma. This is because you are basically fully safe from gunshots from enemy NPCs. There might be the odd bullet that connects with you, but this is extremely rare. The next tip I have is to make sure before you dive into playing these missions, to make sure you fill up on snacks. They can literally be bought in so many properties in the game, even local convenience stores. They can save you in so many situations if you are about to die and can just fully top up your health instantly even in the middle of a gunfight. Another thing I want to say is that to call Lester when you have a wanted level, as in some of these missions he will remove your wanted level, but in some he won't, but it's always worth checking as it makes the mission so much easier to lose the cops. I didn't use the Oppressor Mark II in any of these missions, because although it is probably the most efficient vehicle to use, I just feel that using it in contact missions kind of ruins the fun of the missions, and it's not what they are about really. Secondly, a lot of people who participate in these missions are lower level players who won't own an oppressor Mark II yet. Anyway guys, that's the end of the video. If you found it helpful, please consider leaving a like and subscribing as it would really help me out. Anyway, that's it and hopefully see you in the next one.